There you are. Welcome back. I just got back into the Seattle area, fresh from Birmingham, UK, where I attended TCT 360. It's a wonderful show out there in Birmingham. I had a great time because I got to not just connect with people that I hadn't seen in a long time. I got to meet new people and see new things at this show. It was incredible. I'm so thankful I was able to go out and I really, really hope I get to make it next year and I hope you do as well. You know, at these shows, I love to stop by different booths and talk to the scientists and the engineers and the manufacturers and the people that make this whole industrial additive manufacturing world roll around. And I got to do that at TCT 360 as well. So we have two awesome episodes planned. This is one of two. What? First up, we've got the AFS from Prusa 3D. Now the AFS from Prusa was debuted at Expo 2020 in Dubai. The AFS is a connected print farm solution that's nearly plug and play. It's a wonderful turnkey solution from Purusha 3D into the industrial side of additive manufacturing. The AFS was on display at TCT 360 and I got a chance to get real close. Have a look. What you've all been waiting for to see is the Prusa AFS. This made a whistle and it has my initials on it. This is my friend Tadesh. Hello. So tell me a little bit about the AFS, because this is the first time I've actually seen it in person. So here we have uh, eight printers that are printing these whistles or the mend. But so they're being can... customized too. Yeah, they are customized. You can put your name in and they'll print your own whistle with your initials on there. I'm excited because I run a Prusa farm myself and uh, my wife is my employee. So she's there pulling prints and starting new prints and putting in filament and uh, you know loading things on SD cards. And so uh, it would be neat, I can imagine, because it takes a lot of time to do that. And so I would imagine people yeah, with larger yeah. farms, sure, there's sure. all this time dedicated to that. This automation is really gonna be able to speed yeah, up the Yeah, they should really free, free up your wife to do some more creative stuff. <laughs> for, the, for the machines that are inside, they're, they're pods, right? Everything can kind of be slid in yes, and out of place. Yes, everything is modular. Everything can be taken out to service without uh, stopping the farm itself. And are the pods based on, they look like Maybe a Prusa XL sort of design? Yes, it's sort of XL. It has been shrunk to fit into standard server racks. That makes sense to me. So then if shrunk a little bit, what's the build volume on each of the pods? These ones are uh, 27 by 27 centimeters on the XY and 16 centimeters on the Z axis. 16 centimeters? 16 centimeters, yeah, quite small, but uh, we will be making taller ones in the future. Oh, so a pod could, yeah, could take can, up two yeah. spaces, it essentially? Can take or... up more, more space, it depends on what, you, what your need is. And not just with bigger pods, so with the machines that are here, like you said, first time at a trade show, but you could add hundreds of machines if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of these machines are controlled via the Prusa Connect interface, yes. right? Yes. And that That's is true. monitoring print times, models, uh, the print queue, the, the queue can, of upcoming. Yeah, you can upload just the set of your G codes, try to print all of them, and it will do it for you. Does the Prusa Connect system with this AFS, like if there, if there's a problem, if if for example this whistle for some reason popped off the build plate, or if if there was a spaghetti mess, is it able to detect that? Uh, not yet, but this is in the pipeline. We will be adding spaghetti detective for sure. When it grabs a build plate, if there's a finished in this, this example a whistle, and it brings it down here and this sort of scraper, it brings the plate out, it scrapes it off yes. to detach the whistle from the plate and it drops it down. Yes. But in, in doing that, so it sounds like with an AFS and any sort of print farm, you really take into consideration, not just the print itself, but what it takes in order to automate that process. There's no skirt or there's no prime yeah, sure. line on there, this, right? There is no skirt and there is no prime line, but that's basically it. We are running it in very basic mode just now for the whistles to speed things up, but the extractor, that's what we call the machine that uh, pulls the prints away from the steel sheet. Uh, it can actually bend the sheet, and in the future it will be able to cool it down as well to help the extraction. Oh. So right now we don't need any fancy stuff for just the whistles. It's quite easy to separate, but if you have like a big, big patchy print, it is able to bend, bend the sheet like you would do in your hand. I, I know it's not at this point where I can be like, so what does it cost to get into an AFS? I would imagine that's still way off in the in the distance. Yeah, we but will be introducing the AFS properly in Frankfurt this autumn. 
Oh, at Form Next. At Form Next, okay. yes, and that will improve pricing. Okay, but for now, so not, if someone wants yet. to know more about it, they can uh, look at the Prusa website. It's afs.prusa3d.com. Hey, man. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Now, Construct 3D is a mother and son team that's creating a 3D printer that's capable of not just high-speed extrusion, but great quality at speed as well. A must-have for a modern workshop is the tagline you see on their website. I had to find out more, so I stopped by their booth at TCT 360 and we had a chat. Jacob here and his mom put yep. together quite an amazing, feature-rich, sexy oh. machine and the benchy just finished so i'm gonna take it off yes so this benchy right here yeah just just to talk about what the capabilities are you said this is a 22 minute bench that is a 22 minute benchy 22. add two minutes to heat up the bed oh so that 22 takes two minutes so no. it's actually a 20 minute it's a 24 minute it's a 24 no. we went the other way yeah, oh, shoot. yeah. other way the machine's got some quickness to it yes it does what's the motion system core xy core xy but crazy accelerations right yes so for this one we are officially saying 17,000 millimeters per second That's squared. But we are trying to push that to 20,000 millimeters per second squared. And but you'll get there. Hopefully, but we are currently limited by the physical raw speed of the motors. And that's why. So we're trying to find like a motor supplier that can do a slightly lower resistance so we can speed that up. So it's just, is it NEMA 17s? NEMA 17s, two amp motors. We've done a lot of testing between 1.8 degrees and 0 0.9 degrees. We ended up with 1.8s because you can spin them twice as quickly. That's right. And that's really important. I would imagine so. Very important. So then for extrusion on this, it looks like you've got a Hamera? Yep. Sweet. If you see the one over there, it still says Hermes on it. Does it really? I know. Ooh, that's how early we were right researching there. stuff. So you're using a Hamera. Does it have a volcano mount it, on it? At the moment, it has a volcano. Pure copper with a copper nozzle as well. OK. But as I'm pretty sure some of the viewers probably know, they're releasing some high flow Revo nozzles. We have an excuse to upgrade now because it's all about speed and that's what matters, speed. And that he, uh, the, the Revo Home Air is going to be slightly lighter too. So you're not going to be throwing yes. around as much weight. Max speed of 320. Um, uh, independent looks... Z motors. So it oh, does really? gantry leveling as well as mesh leveling. Oh, so it levels this way. Yep. And then it, and then it gets it, does it that the mesh good level and then top. it does the mesh leveling. Yep. Okay. What's the build volume here? So for the small one, it's 200 by 280 by 180, so it's pretty small. It's kind of small. And there is a reason for that, and that's because this is actually a waste reduction measure. So this takes all of the offcuts of the big machine and means we don't waste anything. The big machine there and the big machine there. Yes. You build those, and whatever's offcut from extrusions and side panels and whatnot, yep. you just kind of turned into one of these. Make it into this. Yep. That's really a fantastic idea. Well, one of our big selling points is recyclability and being responsible with what we do. So one of the reasons for the wood side panels, we know exactly where these were grown, we know where they were cut down, processed, manufactured, to make sure it's sustainable. Same with the aluminium. It's 90% recycled aluminium, and we're trying to up that to 100%. What I'm curious about, though, is what is, what is your intended customer for this? Are you looking at okay. hobbyists, professionals, or, I mean, you're at TCT, is this an industrial offering? It's a mixture of all, but unintentionally. I oh. came into this with customers, like consumers and the community in mind. I wanted to be able to give people like the Voron experience without them having to build a Voron. And we ended up taking it to my local university and they loved it to the point where they had this unnamed 50,000 pound 3D printer that they said they hate and they'd rather have 20 of these instead. Really? Just because of the repairability of this. So there's a lot of parts in this that say it's out of warranty three years down the line, these parts aren't going anywhere. These are industry standard from CNC sides to high engineering. You can get them and they're very cheap because they're used across the board, but they're also more reliable. And that's why we chose a lot of the parts. And the decisions you've made, obviously, for people that are interested in stuff like this, um, that, that plays into their decisions mm. as well. Being able to three to five years down the road, possibly repair or upgrade if you are not around. Exactly. And it sounds like they're able to do that with this machine. Because the one thing we didn't want was DRM. We don't want you to put a filament like wheel in and you can't use it because it's not our brand. So get rid of that. Any filament will do as long as it melts. Good, good. And the same with all the other parts. Like we're using E3D parts here. We're using Duet parts there. there there's a lot of clones of them. And that's yeah, yeah. one of the good things. Because say one of those companies goes down, you can just get someone else. 
and you can get them next day. And we're going to wrap it up here, but there's two important questions. Go one, on. what's the price tag on this? This mini one? Yeah. Let me check. <laughs> £985.45, not including VAT. And if people want to know more information about this or the two big ones on either side of us or about your company, where would they go? So you can go to construct3d.com. It's nice and catchy. It's beautiful. Uh, I spent a lot of time on Squarespace making that website. That's darn cool. Well, now I challenge the audience to go to your website and actually take a look, get some more information. If they have any questions, they can leave them in the comments. Maybe you'll see them. That would be brilliant. Please crash the website. It's never happened before and it'll be hilarious. You're asking trouble. Jacob, thank you, man. You know, I am really thankful I got the chance to see what 3D Tomorrow was showing at TCT 360. They utilize cardboard spools and the artwork on the spools is really eye-catching. Cool filament on a cardboard spool. There's a lot of that right here in 3D Tomorrow. Oh, this is Callum hey. right here. Hey, man. Hi, how good? Good to meet you. Good to meet you as well. So 3D Tomorrow, first of all, I have to tell you, when I stepped up to here and to your booth and I saw the spool, it looked like a Kraken attacking a pirate ship from far away. But then when you get closer, you realize it's corn and a nozzle. It is, it's the transition. I mean, it's the whole, whole process of the filament, isn't it? So you're taking the PLA from the corn and you're extruding it, so there we go. So then you at 3D Tomorrow, you are actually, you're not taking the corn itself, I would imagine. You're not getting quite. the PLA resin in yeah. pellet form and adding some magic and making this wonderful stuff, right? Yeah, at the moment it's, a, it's an American-British collab because we're using NatureWorks. Um, but we're also experimenting with recycled PLAs, so we can do that more locally. Um, but yeah, we're extruding that into filament, adding some uh, great colors. Everything, all the colors are custom made. Uh, that's, that one there is galaxy black. It's a very nice galaxy black. I saw on the table was this right here. Now, cardboard spools, but this looks to be a 3D printed piece in the middle. Is that right? Yeah, basically. Um, you may have heard of the, the master spool concept. That was by Richard Horn, Rich Rep. And oh uh, you know that that was that was proposed many years ago, and uh, <laughs> I felt it needed a little bit of a 3D tomorrow twist. I I didn't want to get rid of the you know the the cardboard flanges which you touched upon the design, um, so I went for a bit of a hybrid solution. Really small amount of 3D printed plastic. Can it's got I? screws. Yeah, yeah, go for it. They're nice, nice and tight on there. The threads are and nice. The, uh, yeah, well, uh, have, I've been printing for many years. So. <laughs> How many years have you been printing for? Back in 2013, I was watching your OG content. Wow, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a long time, man. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah, so you get a refill roll. I and it looks see. like that, before and after. And, uh, so then people, really, this insert for your cardboard flanges are nothing. It's like not, yeah. it's barely any material it's at all. Like uh, about 30 grams or something crazily, crazily low. It's not, not a lot. Right, I mean, you probably, people probably have that left over on just random spools. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to uh, use up that last bit, make yourself a spool. And then obviously you're not shipping these each time, you're not making these each time, they can just reuse them. And uh, yes, yeah, like uh, the ecos are the, the, the big thing for me, that's why I got into it. Well, it's perfect too because I like the idea of a cardboard spool and, and you've made it really exciting with the design on it. I mean, I had to do a double take to actually get the correct <laughs> representation of what the image was, but but I think that's really fun. And the ability to reuse it, it's a nice stiff cardboard spool. I don't see any problems with this rolling in a machine. It, it, took, it took a few design revisions. So I imagine. It's, uh, it's not number one, that's for sure. So uh, this is the Rose Dragon. Uh, it's been printed by Filament Frenzy. I love it, Food. and you said the green is what? Green's electric lime, and then you've got Rose, Rose Nebula on the top. Rose Nebula electric perfect, lime. Perfect that green is Rose fantastic. Dragon. Thank you, yeah, it's got, uh, it's got a golden flake in it. Everybody out there, I'm going to be getting some of this 3D Tomorrow filament in, and now you've seen what the red looks like, that, that nebula, this uh, electric lime, yep. and a the blue and the galaxy black. You've got a lot of options. Pick one on the website, and whoever has, whichever filament has the most comments below, I'll have Callum send that, and I'll print with that on the show. That should so, be fun. Sounds good, yeah. Have a good rest of TCT, man. <laughs> nice one, indeed. The Zacks team at TCT360 had a few machines on display and I was excited to stop by. The X3 3D printer from Zacks really looks to pack a punch and these new machines look to take it even further. Have a look. Hey Baki. Hey Joel. Tell me about this machine because it sounds cool. 
So yeah, this is our last generation 3D printer, we call Z3. So the build plate is really huge, 40 by 30 by 35 millimeters. 40 print area. by 30, 30 by 35. 20, 35 tall. Yep, 35. Wow, okay, so that's a decent build volume. Yeah, uh, we have three independent Z axis, so we can make Z tilt and then also mesh leveling together, combined together. So you can really get high quality first layer. Almost perfect. Well, with the three, right? It's it's three points make a plane. Yeah. So then you've and you've got independent control yeah, of all of them. Yeah, we can see Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah, so that okay. essentially that ensures a nearly impeccable first layer every time. Yes. What do you have for an extrusion system? So we're using the E3D V6 hot end system, which is titanium version. So, but you can if if, if you want to upgrade to the Revo system, you can easily do that. We can also use the Clipper system, which is I think we are the first commercial company to use the Clipper firmware. So we combine the Clipper firmware to with our Zax firmware. So you can use really high speeds with, with this printer. Wow. OK, so then it, it looks like it's a Core XY motion system, right? Yes. So Core XY and Clipper obviously is the holy grail for many. If I tell you Voron, yes. right, that's what a lot of people like. So then exactly. what sort of speeds are we talking about if you put Clipper on this thing? So right now, the normal speed is 60 millimeters per second. But if you want to print much more high speed, you can go up to 150. OK, so millimeter. it's moving pretty quick. Yeah. And you need that, especially in a larger build volume, because you don't want, print, you don't want prints to have to take a week. And it is warm, like it feels really, like I want to bake cookies on this thing. But you said it's passively heated, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, we have passively heated build chamber. So we have the polycarbon side cover, so it can keep the temperature much more stable. And we have a, some of the temperature sensor into the build plate, build uh, chamber. So you can heat up maximum 65 degrees. Oh, so it, it's passively heated with the build plate, but then it actually has a sensor inside. Yes. So if it gets to a certain point, a fan will kick in exactly. to kind of get some of that heat out. Exactly. Oh, exactly. okay. Well, that's kind of handy. What are people looking at if they want to pick one up? This printer is seven, 3,079 euro. 3,079 euro. Yeah. Okay. And if they want to find out more information about this machine or some of the other stuff you're doing, where's the best place to go? So they can check our website, which is .com, and also 3B3D is our exclusive distributor in England, so they can check it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. 3B3D. Yes. That's it. Rolls off the tongue. And Zax is Z-A-X-E. Yes. Okay, perfect. It comes from Z-Axis. That makes sense. Yes. Well, you out there, if you're watching this, I'd love for you to go to the website and kind of take a look at what's cooking because Zax is, uh, is going to be seen again here on the show. How cool was that? Four awesome booths from TCT360, and this is just episode one. Don't worry, episode two is coming soon. If you're watching this later, though, it might already be out. Be sure to check the description to find out the link for the next one. I had a great time at TCT360, and I was really thankful to get a trip over to the UK. I can't wait to do it again next year, and I hope to see you there. You made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. And as always, high five.